The reason why I wanted to talk to you about the life of prayer today is because we are part of an amazing ministry. The presence of the Lord is here. We desire to do things God's way, biblically, at all times, regardless of what's happening in the culture. And so it's always been an honor to serve here, but it was an even more of an honor last year as we were going through chaos and confusion. 2020 was tough. But God was with us. God never failed us. And we kept ear to hearing what the Spirit of God was saying, and we kept in step with the Spirit of God. And we were not allowing the culture to bamboozle us or to, to have us shut down or to live in fear. Metro Praise continued to live by faith, amen, continued to live according to the word of God. But through those trials, there were many of us who came out stronger than ever before. As our faith was tested, our faith came out purer than gold, just like the word of God said. But there were some who shrunk back. There were some who decided, this is not worth it for me. I don't want to continue. I don't, this, is not, this is not a priority to me. Me going to church during a pandemic is not a priority to me. I would rather stay at home and be online. Me, me speaking out against the riots, speaking out against BLM and all their anti-God agenda, it's not worth it to me. My job is worth more than all of that. Those people did not have faith. And I want to tell you one thing about those people. And I, could, I can bet you their prayer life was not where it needed to be. They were not reading their Bible the way that they needed to have read the Bible. I want to tell you something about my Bible study before all of that crazy stuff happened. We were going through the book of Acts, and we were finishing up the book of Acts. And so when I saw what was happening at Nini's Deli, when we showed up to preach the gospel, looked like a page out of the book of Acts. And so those who were not reading their Bible, that was, that was foreign to them. But those who were reading their Bible were saying, praise God, I'm seeing revival take place here. It starts in your prayer closet with Jesus. It does not start here. Your faith being refined does not start on a Sunday morning. Now we praise God that you're here. We thank God for the relationship and the fellowship that we have together. But my goal today is to fan the flames inside of you that when you go home today, you would want to meet with Jesus, the king of all the earth. A life of prayer it's going to lead to longevity in your walk with Christ. You want to know how to live for Jesus all the days of your life. You establish a life of prayer. A life of prayer will keep you from sin. Because when you enter into the prayer closet, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and will point out things in your heart that nobody else around here will be able to do. A life of prayer will keep you from sin. A life of prayer will keep your family in order. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom and nuggets on how to establish procedures and protocols and all that, those things, boundaries for your family so you know how to have your house in order. A life of prayer will fan the flames in your belly so that you will always burn for Jesus. You're tired of living for Jesus. It's getting boring, and it's the same thing each and every day. And I get up, and I go to church, and I go to King's Kids, and I go to Bible study. And I go to, it's the same thing over and over. But you meet with Jesus, and he'll give you vision on why you do what you do and why he's called you to do those things. He will fan the flames inside of you to burn for him all the days of his life. A life of prayer will keep your priorities in order so that you understand that your job doesn't come before Jesus. Your 401k does not come before Jesus. Your family, your mother, your father, and all their opinions don't come before Jesus. Only in your secret place with the Lord will you get these revelations. A life of prayer will keep you from shrinking back when persecution comes. And persecution will come. That is a promise. Every person who desires to live for Jesus and preach the gospel will face persecution. Amen? That's what I desire today as I speak to you the words of Jesus is to help each and every person in here understand how important this is, a relationship with Jesus. It's not about sacrifices. It's not about bringing, bringing your animals to the altar. None of that. It's about your relationship with Jesus. 
prayer life with Jesus. What is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God and to make requests to him. God has given us access to him for us to be able to communicate with him. And as the days get darker, as the days become more evil, your relationship with God is thus is more important than ever before. Amen? Here's the beautiful thing about our king is that he gave us an example on how to pray. So let's turn into our Bibles to Matthew 6, verse 5 through 15. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 15. And at the end, we're going to allow for a time of prayer. We're going to invite you up to the altar, and we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord's presence as we pray. Here's the Lord's prayer. This is what Jesus wants us to know when he was asked, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen? The first thing we, that we see Jesus is telling us, don't be a hypocrite. What is a hypocrite? Do, does anybody like hypocrites? No, right? We say, oh, that person's fake. They're phony. I don't want to be around them. But check your heart because Jesus is telling his disciples, don't be a hypocrite. That means as Christians, as his disciples, we can possibly be tempted to become a hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone who is, puts on an act. They're not real. They're not genuine. And what are they doing it for? They're doing it for the praise of men. So we have to guard ourselves that when we do our spiritual acts unto the Lord, that we don't lose sight of him and, and start to do things for each other and start to do things so that you can give me a pat on the back and say, good job. No, it's all about Jesus. Hypocrisy is going to be in every circle that you ever enter. You at work, at home, with family members, friendships, you'll find hypocrisy and you'll find it in the church. Don't be a hypocrite. Amen? Guard your heart and ask the Lord to keep you from that and to always do things for him and only for him. Amen? And the Bible says that when you win the favor of God, it overflows and you get the favor of men. Amen? So you don't have to worry about trying to get each other's favor and trying to get a good name amongst each other. If you take care of your relationship with God, you're going to have a good reputation amongst men. Amen? The next thing is that we're invited to go to pray in secret. Let's go back up. It says, but when you pray, verse 6, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen? Go into the secret place. Get rid of all distractions. Get rid of your phone and go to hear the still, small voice of God. Amen? The Bible says that you will receive a reward from your Father. And my encouragement to you today is that your reward from your Father in heaven is far, weighs far more than any reward than any man can ever give you in this world. Amen? That reward will last for all of eternity. Men's rewards will last temporarily. Amen? The next thing is don't babble. You don't have to continue babbling on and on when you're praying. Now, this doesn't mean don't get excited and don't pray for a long time. What this means, it says, verse 7, let's go down there. And when you pray, do not heap up empty, empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. The Gentiles, the pagans, who were they praying to? Were they praying to the living God? No, they were praying to idols. They were praying to idols made by human hands. So they kept babbling on because the idols couldn't hear them. Those false gods can't hear them. We don't have to do that because we don't have a false god. We have the living God who already knows what we want before we even open up our mouths. Isn't that amazing? Now, yes, prayer is a mystery. Our God already knows what we want, but yet he desires us to open up our mouth. I know my son wants a gift all the time. I know he wants treats and snacks, and it's awesome when he asks for it and doesn't just expect it, amen? So when we ask, it's in that relationship with God, and as we ask, he answers us, amen? We don't have to babble. We don't have to force him to listen to us. He's just wanting us to ask, amen? And the beautiful thing says, our God knows the depths of our heart. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. Pray then like this. 
Okay, here's the example. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen? What do we see first when we open up in prayer? Here's the standard prayer. This is a kingdom prayer. Praise God. Enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving. Don't come in there like a spoiled child. Come in there with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy is your name. Praise him. Come on. There's times where you're facing a situation and you're feeling all types of emotions. I don't know if anybody can relate here. But you begin to praise the name of God and the atmosphere changes. Your heart changes. There is power when we begin to praise the name of the living God. So that's where we start. The next thing is we ask for his kingdom to come and his will to be done. What's next on the priority list? It's putting his kingdom first. When we ask for his kingdom to come, yes, we want him to come and to rule and reign. But his kingdom come now, now, through us, through you and through me. His kingdom come now in the workplace. His kingdom come now in the high schools and in the colleges. His kingdom come now in the White House. Amen. His kingdom come now through you and through I. Amen. We put the kingdom of God first. We put his will first. And look at this example of prayer. The kingdom comes before our needs. We always put the kingdom before our needs. My personal needs are to be comfortable and to come around here and just sit down and serve or to be served. Many of us are like this, right? We don't want to be, we don't, we don't want to, you know, cause too much uh, attention for ourselves. We just want to be comfortable, right? Nobody say anything to me. I'm just coming to church. I'm going to sit here and just be cute. No, the kingdom of God says that comes first before you being comfortable. Amen. The kingdom of God says it comes before your personal needs, before your family, amen? Although those things are important, the kingdom of God comes first. You seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, and all other things are added unto you. Isn't that beautiful? And yes, God invites us then to ask for our daily bread. We ask for our daily needs because God cares for us. And it's daily needs, our daily bread. And so this is not just talking about your, your food and your finances, but this is an opportunity to, for you to present all of your needs. There are things that people are dealing with in this room and those listening online that you do not bring to Jesus. And you're walking around carrying these burdens that you do not need to carry. And the only reason you're carrying them is because you do not bring them to the Lord in prayer. We look to each other to be able to, to solve the problems, to be able to give each other all the wisdom and, and to give us a breakthrough when all we have to do is present our need before the Father. Amen? And he's going to give us the way out. Present your needs. Present your needs. There are people in this room who are dealing with anxiety and you're feeling tormented and you're feeling darkness and you're feeling like nobody else understands. Present that need before, before God each and every day. That is your daily need. You don't pray about it every now and then. You pray about it every day until that need is met and the peace of God falls upon you. Amen? Meet with Jesus. See, we want these microwave prayers, right? We want God to just answer us right then and there. I remember coming to this church, being in 101 with Pastor Nancy. I did it about two and a half times because I wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. And we believe the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Not for salvation, but for the power of the Holy Spirit to be. And Pastor Joe said, well, you go to your prayer closet and you stay there until the Lord meets you there. <laughs> well, all right then. And sure enough, the Lord met me there. Amen. Present your needs to God. He is a good father. He wants to answer his children. The next thing is ask God to forgive you. Search your hearts. Search your hearts, my friends. Ask God, forgive me of any wicked sin inside of me. None of us are exempt from temptation. Ask the Lord to forgive you. If you fall, you repent and you get back up again. There is no lifestyle of habitual sin for a son and a daughter of God. You allow habitual sin in your life, you will begin to drift away. God doesn't move, you move. And it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that. Present, ask God to forgive you of your sins. And as you do so, you also forgive others. Yes, people hurt us. Yes, people are mean sometimes. And they do wicked things to us. But you know what? We forgive them. 
just as our Heavenly Father forgave us. And so you see this prayer right here. You see this kingdom prayer, and it's, it's powerful. It's short, but it's powerful. Why? Because it has everything that we need. And Jesus said, this is how you are to pray. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We should always pray for protection. We should always pray that we would be able to discern when there's evil around us trying to tempt us, that we would not fall under the temptation of sin. Amen? But there's excuses that we make. It's simple. Prayer is simple, but yet it's profound, right? But we make excuses as to why we can't pray. Well, I can't pray because I'm too busy. I know that excuse. I've used that excuse. I, I can't pray because I'm too tired, right? I wait to pray till the nighttime, and nighttime comes, the kids are sleeping, and I'm, I'm sleeping too on the couch. You know, we're tired, but those are excuses, and that's the flesh. We can't afford not to pray. We are headed into a time where it's not going to be so easy to be a Christian. We need to pray. We need to meet with the living God and come expecting. Jesus Christ, the greatest man who ever walked this earth, prayed, and he talked to the Father. He is our greatest example. If he did it, how much more should we do it? Amen? I want to, I'm going to read to you some promises that Jesus said. I want you to listen to these, and I want you to hear them, listen to them, as if it was your very first time listening to them. In the book of John, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they... They will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Wow. That's in the Bible. It's in the Bible that we read every day. He said, you will ask me for anything. You can ask me for anything. You may ask me in for anything, and I will do it. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? We have full access to the Father. The Bible says that all authority in heaven has been given to Jesus Christ, and Jesus just said that we can ask him for anything in his name, and he will do it. He's talking to disciples. He's not talking to unbelievers. So if you and I have a, a personal relationship with Jesus, we've been born again. We can ask him for anything. We can ask him for the city of Chicago. Amen? We can ask him for our communities. We can ask him for our family members to be saved and our co-workers to be saved. Come on, church, if we catch this, if we catch the authority that has been passed on to us as disciples, we will never be the same again. I believe it. I believe God is drawing us and he's, he's bringing us into another level. Yes, Metro Praise, you've done well. You've done well, but we have not arrived. There is more glory to be poured out upon this church, upon the city of Chicago. Amen. There is more. Ask ask, ask. John chapter 15, verse 7 through 8. Jesus said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. When we bear much fruit, it is to the Father's glory. He said, ask whatever you wish Okay, we're going to ask, Lord. We're going to ask for a miracle. We're going to ask that you expand our territory. We wish for more land. We wish for more souls. We wish for more finances and resources so that we can continue the work of the ministry. So we can have 50 churches here in Chicago. Amen? Ask whatever you wish. John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Come on, Jenny. God chose you, Jenny. Right? God chose you. You did not cho choose me, but I chose you, appointed you, so that you might go and bear much fruit. Wow. Fruit that will last. Not temporary fruit. Not fruit that will go rotten. Not fruit that's going to spoil right away. Fruit that will last. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. When we walk in step with the Spirit, the heart of God is put inside of us. And we're going to ask for things that are going to advance the kingdom of God and are going to give the Father much glory. Here's the last promise from the, from the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. 
Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Amen? Ask. Are we getting it now? Are we getting? Are we understanding? God wants us to open up our mouth and ask him for kingdom-minded things. Ask him for blessings because it honors him. There are some times that we ask and we receive right away. Have you ever had that happen to you in your life? You've, you've received uh, an answer to your prayer the very next day and you're just amazed. There are some times where you have to seek and then you find. And there are other times where you stand at the door and you will knock until that door will be opened for you. Amen? Do we have any people here that are willing to spend time in prayer, in their relationship with the Lord, and ask the Lord to open up some doors? Come on. Lord, open up the doors so we can minister all over the nation. Open up the door, Lord, so we can go to China. Open up the door, Lord, so we can go to the 1040 window and plant churches for your glory. Open up the door, Lord. I know that it's your will that we would preach to all four corners of the earth. Ask ask, ask, church. That's what I came here to tell you. If you develop a life of prayer, all you have to do is ask. You have confidence before the Father because you have that relationship with him where you can ask and you know he will answer. Amen? Come on, there's times, I, there's things I've received, personal breakthrough, personal breakthrough in my life, and it's only come through prayer, the revelation that God has given me in prayer. It didn't come from me seeking my husband, and I'm asking him to help me and help me in this area, or going to the pastors and asking them to help me. Yes, wisdom amongst each other is important, but guess what? There's old, some things that only God can do in that secret place with him, amen? Come on, church. This is the secret. It's relationship with Jesus. It's simple, but yet so profound. Amen? Here's how we can apply this to our life. Number one, you have to be born again. You have to be in right relationship with God first before you receive these promises. What good would it be if God answered every single one of your prayers, but yet you lost your soul? The first prayer for you is the prayer of repentance. And I'm here to tell you that there is grace for you, that there's mercy for you, and there's nothing that you have done that's so wicked that God cannot forgive. Amen? Come to Jesus today. Be born again. Become a disciple and leave your lifestyle of sin. Whatever this world offers compares nothing to what God has for you. Amen? So number one, be born again. Be in right relationship with, with Christ. If you're a Christian and you're living a lukewarm life, repent today and get right with the Lord. Number two, begin having a persistent prayer life. Amen? Be like the widow who would not stop coming to the judge and asking until her request was granted. If that wicked judge did it for her, our Heavenly Father, who's so good, will do it for us. Be persistent in your prayers. Do not grow weary and do not give up. And as I go to the last um, part of application, I'm going to invite the band to come up to the front, please, because we're going to go into a time of prayer. And the last thing, the last way for you to apply this to your life is wait upon the Lord. Amen, Christians? Don't grow weary in your prayers and you're asking the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Be still and know that he is God. When you go into that prayer closet, make time to stop, to be still in the presence of God. And he is going to speak to you. And I speak this over you and I believe and I'm so expectant that next week there will be people here with testimonies of what God did for you in the prayer closet. Amen? There are things that you've been holding on to. There are things that you haven't been asking because you think God doesn't care about that. That's a dream I had from way back then, and that's over. God doesn't care. No, I want to invite you today to ask. Dig up those old dreams, those old visions that God gave you way back when, when you first gave your life to Jesus, and ask the Lord to make it happen. Amen? We're going to invite our prayer workers to come up to the front. I'm actually going to invite our prayer workers to stand on this side of the stage. So if our prayer workers are here, if you can come up to the altar. Prayer workers, elders, deacons, come up to the altar. If you have personal prayer requests, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to invite you to come up right here. And they're here. You guys can spread out up into here, right here. I think four is good. Personal prayer requests, private prayer requests. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come pray right here. Okay? But everybody else, I'm going to invite you to stand up to your feet, and we're going to pray. We're going to do something that's called rapid fire prayer 
And I'm going to invite you to line up right here. If you have a dream, if you have a, a, a prayer request, and you want us to stand in agreement with you, if you want to pray for the city of Chicago, you want to pray for the campuses that God has given us, I want to invite you to come right here. Come on, Nathan. I want you to start us off right here. Come on. Come on, Victor. Come on, Bethany. All right, line up, guys. We're going to ask God for big things today. We're going to ask him. We're going to ask him for our high schools. We're going to ask him for our colleges. Come on, what else? We're going to ask him for your co-workers. Line up, everybody. Come on. Danelli, come up. Andrew, come up. We're going to pass this mic around, and we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord. We're going to partner with him in prayer. We're going to take him at his word. We're going to put God's word to the test, and we're going to ask. And we're going to receive because that's what he said. And he is not a man that he should lie. Come on. God is good and he is faithful. So come up. Come on. If you need prayer, I want to invite you to come up. And everybody else, let's stand in agreement as we pass the mic around and pray. Lord, I just pray for my family, Jesus, that they will come to repentance, Lord, that they will come to church and, and just hear your word, Lord, that the revival will be set in their hearts, Jesus. I pray for more, for more boldness in my life, Lord, to preach in my high schools, Lord, to preach in my, the hallways, Lord, to know that there is a living God, that there is a living God that is a, that is a loving God that loves people, that loves people enough to not, to just want, to just send me out to just pray for them and to just tell them that there is a living God. Jesus, that there is a loving God that loves them, that doesn't want to see them in suffering, that doesn't want to see them suffer, Lord, I pray for my family, that my sister will, will be saved, Lord, that she will run away from the, from the gay community, Jesus, that my mom will be set free, Lord, that the shekels will fall and the walls will fall, Jesus, that she will know that God is there for her that my sisters will know that, that they are not alone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Lord, I pray right now, God, I pray for all the families, God, all the families that are not centered around you, God. I pray for my household, God. I pray, Lord, for my mother, God. I pray, Lord, that she would be slow to anger, God. I pray, Lord, that she would just be set free, that she would see me as the example, God. I pray for the, the youth, God, that are the examples in their household, that they will not lose their fire, God, for you, God. I pray, Lord, that they would continue in the one-on-one, continue in the two-on-one, Lord, continue to be the example to the older people and their family, God. I pray, Lord, for my sister, Lord, that she would not continue in this witchcraft, God, that she would know it is of the devil and not of you, God. We cannot claim to love you, God, but not do what is of you, God. I pray, Lord, that you would use me as the example, Lord, in my household. And I pray, Lord, for my dad, Lord. I pray, Lord, that he would sit out of this depression, God, that you would set him free, God. If you could do it for us, you could do it for them too, God. In your name I pray, amen. Lord, Father God, I just want to pray for my neighborhood, Lord. I just want to pray that instead of everybody always walking on with guns, Lord, that they'll start coming to church, Lord. I just want to pray that, I just want to pray for my, the, the high schools, so, Lord, in my neighborhood, Lord. I just want to pray that they'll stop bullying the um, Christian clubs, Lord, because most of the people that walk around my neighborhood, Lord, they bully everybody that they see, Lord. I just want to pray, I just want to pray for my family, Lord, that... They'll come to you, Lord, like how I came to you, Lord, that instead of doing the, the wicked things that they're doing, Lord, that they'll pray, Lord, and they'll repent for what they did, Lord. I just want to pray that you give me the confidence to preach the gospel to them, Lord. I just want to pray that I won't always get scared to come up and say what I got to say about you, Lord, that I'll have the confidence to do it, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear God, I just pray for all these youth, God, in this city, God. They are so numb to your spirit. I just pray, Lord, that they will come after you, not be scared of what their friends going to think, God, because you do not want them to perish, Lord, because they are your sons and daughters, God. I just pray, Lord, that they will not care about their phone, about their friends, God, about the drugs that they do, God, but then they'll be focused on you, for them to be the leaders in their family, even if they are the only one, for them to win their whole entire family to the Lord, God. I just pray that they will lead their friends, God, that they will go out and not be afraid to do what you want them to do, for they will fill out their, your calling for them, Lord. I just pray that they will lead, God. They will show people how to do it, God. If they are scared, Lord, for them to be the leaders in their families. I just pray that they will come after you, God. If they're your sons and daughters, Lord, and, they do not, and you do not want them to perish. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. A few more. Let's believe. 
church. Let's stand in the gap right now and believe. I want you, if you're at your seat, I want you to stand in agreement or just start interceding, interceding for your families, your communities. Come on, lost souls for revival to fall upon the land. Come on, church. Let's pray. Let's stir up the gift. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, hallelujah, Father God. We lift up those who identify in you, Christ. We pray for a bonus to overcome them, Lord. We pray that they stop dealing with worldly things, Lord, and that they change their mindsets, Lord, to be of you, Jesus. We pray for their hearts to align with yours, Lord. We pray for their hearts to, their eyes, sorry, to align with you, Lord, Father God. Their minds, their bodies. We pray, Lord, for an understanding that you work through them and for them, Jesus. That you walk with them, Lord. We come against any timidity, Lord, anything that holds anyone back, Lord, from preaching the gospel, Lord, Father God, even speaking to myself in those tough times, Lord, Father God, we pray for your power, Lord, to just pour out of us, Jesus. And we, we, we repent, Lord. We repent for those, Lord, who identify you and are afraid of COVID, Lord. Have their doors closed, Jesus. Who don't go out and speak to their families, Lord. Who don't go out and speak to their friends, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. We pray that you change their heart, Lord, that you break them, that you break them and you show them how to be a true disciple of you. It's not enough to be a Christian anymore. They need to be a disciple of you, Lord, going after your heart, Lord, going after your mind, Lord. And we lift up every believer to you, Jesus, and we pray that you give them visions and dreams. Old, young, babies, Lord, we're hearing it out of mouth of babes, Lord. Let's start young, Lord, and raise them up. And let's pray we always stay with you, Lord, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. God, we come before you with a heart of thanksgiving, Lord. I want to pray, Lord, for those who are homeless, Father God. It's been setting heavy on my heart, Lord, with this frigid weather, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you may have uh, take away that pride, Lord, of not wanting help from uh, those that are trying to help them, Lord. We pray for those who are who are cold, Lord, that they may find shelter, that those that, that have can give, Father God. I pray for a heart and mind of discernment when we are walking around and finding these homeless, even on the train, Lord. Uh, some are asking for money just for their for their wicked desires, for that void to, to fill up with either drugs or alcohol, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we may give that money to the ones who actually need it, Father God. I pray, Lord, that if we have the time and the resources that we may go outside and give what we have for those who don't have lord i pray that we can give them and show them that that unconditional love that you have given us that we can give it to them around our community and it starts with us lord each and every one of us has a purpose lord and those people are broken we need to come forth together as a family as a church that we can push forward and give that love that they are so uh, wholeheartedly desiring father god i pray father god that you may help them uh Fill that void just with the love and presence of you, Lord. And I pray for, for just warmth in this uh, bitter cold weather throughout the weeks that are, are approaching, Lord, that you may just have a, a, a heart of mercy, Lord Jesus, that they may uh, fi find a place of rest, Lord, and, and help us to continue looking forward to those people who need our help, Lord, and, and have us not hesitate on, hey, I need this for this or, or that. They are struggling more than, than we do, and we are so blessed to have jobs right now in, in, a, in an economy that is struggling, Lord. I pray for, for all of this in your mighty name, Jesus. Few more. Thank you, God, for this word, Lord Jesus. I thank you that we can ask anything in your name, God, according to your will, and it shall be done, God. So, Lord, I pray tonight for our outreach, God, at PGM Homeless Shelter, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that revival would fall, God, and salvation would fall upon those, God, that today, God, that they would feel your love and that they would, God, give their life to you, God, and that, God, they would have that bondages would be broken, God, that addictions would be broken, God, and revival would take place, God. I pray that you would continue to fan the flames, God, in this church, God, so we can continue to move by your spirit and see Jesus in Chicago, see Jesus in the Dallas, see the 50 churches that we are believing for, God, come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray for my mother. I pray that you heal her and not that she would think that it's because of Zeus or Thor or the Pope or the Virgin Mary, but it was because of the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, I, I pray that you heal her broken heart, her emotional situation, Lord. I, I pray for everybody who has um, gone through some kind of trauma or something like that. My heart breaks for them. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them, give them peace. 
and uh, just give, fill them with hope so they can move forward. And Lord, I, I pray for my sister. I pray that she would stop, put down the alcohol. I pray that she would stop being the devil's realtor. I pray that she would be a realtor to glorify your name. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, David's going to close us out in prayer. Lord, I pray, I pray for my family who are, who are in Roman Catholicism, and Jehovah's Witnesses and my brother who, who, is, who is Muslim and I pray that they may get to know you Lord because you're the true living God because we know because we know you're, you're, you're the Holy One, you're the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last and that you died for us Lord and we don't deserve it Lord but you did it for the love of us Lord so you, you loved us enough to do it Lord. And I also pray for the people that we are going tonight later on to Pacific Garden Mission. That they may get to that they may get to know you. That they may get to know your Lord so they can repent of their sins and be born again. And we pray for revival, Lord, in Chicago too. And, and every and, and, and for everyone to get to know you, Lord. And we pray and, and we pray and say in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We thank you for this. Come on, church, let's close out with the song of worship.